Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to be doing Gaz Webby's Sunday Roundup for today's fur video. So as also on Sunday, we've got your eclectic mix of this and that. We're looking at things like sea surface temperature anomalies, uh, solar activity, uh, Eurasian snow cover and Arctic surface extent. The AO, NAO and the weather next 10 to 14 days and beyond. I shall get on with that for you. Uh, very shortly, just say that the first video released today was our 7 a.m. forecast, and also, of course, uh, we released an autumn update, the fourth autumn update. So, check that one out if you would uh, like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on all videos. Thank you so much for doing that. We're going to be live uh, at 6 p.m. this evening, so I shall see you then. Uh, um, but what about that at the end of the video? Right, so we're going to start off with QBO, class IB, NEO. Oscillation. We now have the number in for uh, for June. So let's come down. The QBO, of course, goes all the way back to the 1950s. Uh, and this is from No. It shows every month's worth of uh, QBO data going back to the 1950s. So let's come down to uh, the uh, recent uh, month, the last month, June. Uh, and we can see that it came in at minus 6.93, uh, which is a further reduction from uh, May, which was plus 0.3. So three this year, the QBO has gradually been reversing from we from uh, west to east phase. We begin the year with quite a strong westerly QBO. I mean, very gradually uh, through the winter and into the spring, we see a reversal of the westerly QBO to the eastly QBO. Uh, go to minus six point nine three when we get into uh, June. That is a proper eastly QBO. Now we are in the. Uh, EC phase of the quasi biennial oscillation, and we can expect this EC QBO to strengthen through uh, the remainder of the year, I think. So, uh, by the time we get through to the end of the year, we really will be seeing some very negative uh, numbers being placed in uh, these spaces. Um, just here, so the coming winter is going to be a proper easterly QBO winter. The reason we look at the QBO uh, is because when you're in an easy phase, you weaken the zonal westerlies. When you're in a westerly phase, you strengthen the zonal westerlies. So easy QBOs can be associated uh, with an increased risk of blocking and a weakened zonal flow and consequently colder conditions in uh, Northern Hemisphere, particularly in the North Atlantic and across Northern parts of Europe. However, it is not as straightforward as that because there are many easy QBOs uh, that are mild winters and many Westy QPOs or a few Westy QPOs are actually colder uh, winters. But it is one of the things that we look at for winter forecasting, what the QBO is doing. And it does look as though uh, this year we will be in uh, uh, this coming winter, I should say, we will be in a proper easterly QBO uh, phase. This is from uh, NASA. So uh, this is uh, depicting uh, what the QBO is currently uh, doing, you know, what phase it's currently in. So with this, you have to think that this is like the stratosphere at the very top of the atmosphere just here. And uh, this is the boundary level of the atmosphere where we're staying place 30 to 50 HPA. So uh, we can see that, uh, so, so the, the brown sandy colours are like, is like Westy QBO phase, and the blue colours like the Easterly QBO phase. So last time we had the Easterly QBO properly in the troposphere was back in 2017-18, almost disappearing off the chart. Since then we have been in a prolonged phase of the westerly uh, quasi biennial oscillation. We tried to go easterly last year, but that failed. We had a failure of the EC QBO last year, and the westerly QBO sort of uh, came back and strengthened. However, the EC QBO never went away. You can see uh, that now the EC QBO is strengthening and descending from the stratosphere down to the troposphere. So uh, here it comes. Yeah, if we uh, zoom in, we can see that, uh, that you know, the ECQO is definitely, definitely, definitely pushing down from the strat into the troposphere and, and strengthening uh, uh, as well, indicated by the intensity of the colours there. So so I think the ECQO is now embedded. I think it's ingrained, and I don't think it will fail uh, this time. Uh, last time when we did have a failure of the ECQBO, we were at its strongest in the, in the start of 2020, in April uh, of 2020, we went down to minus 5.03, and then it gradually uh, came back up into positive uh, numbers as West EQBO came back. This time we've already gone under that at minus 6.93. Um, and it just, it looks so much smoother, doesn't it, that, that dissension of the uh, QBO this time. It's just a very, very nice and smooth uh, uh, dissension from the stratosphere in control of this. So I don't think the EC QBO is going to fail this time. Famous last words, uh, I think this is it, and, and we're going to have EC QBO now for the rest of the year and into next year, and including, of course, the coming winter. 
more about that in the next few weeks and months, of course. Right, so activity uh, next. This is how the solar disk is looking on outside of the disk today from solarham.net. We've got quite a few sunspot regions. And actually, uh, yesterday, solar activity was at high levels, which is the first time we've been able to say that for a very, very long time, I think. Um, certainly when we've been doing gas work, it's sending around, anyway, uh, coinciding uh, with the Sunday uh, roundup. So, uh, yeah, so activity uh, yesterday was at high levels, reported by uh, Soham.net, and it's expected to uh, remain at moderate levels for the next three days. So definitely, so activity is increasing at the moment. We haven't got the tracker to show you this week, but we have got this from uh, Rich, who am I today? Oh, it's, oh look, it's uh, Gab Spider-Man. It's Gab Spidey. Thank you. Uh, Rich, you're turning me into Spidey. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Rich. Uh, right. So uh, this is showing uh, the spot the spotless days and the current spotless stretch. So the current spotless stretch is zero days um, because we had uh, quite a few sunspots yesterday and so activity was at uh, high levels. For 2021 overall, we have had uh, 40 days, I think it is, or is it 46? Like 46 days uh, without sunspots. That's 25% of the year so as i say i've been saying over the past few weeks that percentage is very very gradually uh coming down uh as we go further on into the year but still like 25 percent quarter of the year uh so far up to beyond now actually just beyond the middle of the year um 25 percent of it has had uh spotless days uh comparable of course to uh last year uh when uh 2020 had 208 days without sunspots that's 57 percent of the year and 2019 had 281 days, 77 percent of the year uh, without sunspots. So uh, clearly, we are moving on into solar cycle. 25 solar cycle is uh, increasing and strengthening. Still quite a high percentage, given we're like um, over 18 months now into the solar cycle. Quite a high percentage, 25 percent uh, to be uh, without sunspots. But uh, that's going to reduce further over the next few uh, months. I would have thought. Right, uh, let's move on to the oceans. Actually, so it's rich, just sending through the data. Let's move on to the oceans then. So this is how the ocean was looking when we did last week's Sunday round. We've got our three areas of interest. We've got the Enso region uh, just here. We've got the Northern Pacific over there. And we've got the North Atlantic over here. That's how things were looking when we did last week's uh, Sunday roundup. Let's have a look at the very latest then, shall we? Uh, no real change in the Enso region. In fact, we have probably warmed... Uh, warmed up the eastern part of the Equatorial Pacific Coast just here. Uh, looks like we've warmed things up a little bit there. We're at ENSO neutral. We're, you know, solidly uh, ENSO neutral uh, at the moment, uh, even though the eastern portion of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean possibly has, like, a, a slight look of El Nino about it, but I don't think we're going to go up into uh, an El Nino. So, again, that's how it looked last week. This is how it looks uh, this week. We have possibly seen uh, to the south of the Equatorial Pacific around here, uh, these cold of an average sea surface temperature have possibly strengthened a little bit uh, to the south of the uh, equator. Um, so that's one to watch, especially if it starts getting colder over towards Peru. That can sometimes be a precursor to uh, to a La Nina. So, so would you keep a, keep a bit of an eye on that over the next few weeks? But at the moment, it definitely looks like Enso neutral condition continues. In the northern Pacific Ocean, no real change there, actually. It remains significantly warmer than average in this northeastern corner of the uh, Pacific Ocean. And then over in the Atlantic Ocean, again, not much change. It is warming up, though, through the tropical Atlantic, looking really quite warm in the southern tropical Atlantic now. Of course, that is an area where we could well start getting tropical storms and or hurricanes. We've got a hurricane at the moment, for example. Um, so, uh, yeah, we might start seeing uh, a mass in the Caribbean. We might start seeing uh, more in the way of uh, hurricane tropical storm activity, you know, with those warm and average sea surface temperature anomalies. And just generally quite a warm Atlantic. Again, it is a little bit cooler for the central part of the North Atlantic. But overall, uh, the, the North Atlantic is in a pretty uh, warm state, uh, once again, to be honest. OK, so let's have a look at that feature in the uh, Trunk Atlantic. I didn't have it up for, so I had to pause the video. So uh, I thought, you know, it jogged my memory and I thought better have a quick look at it. So uh, it's actually gone back from a hurricane to a tropical storm now. It's uh, so it's tropical storm Elsa here 
in the Caribbean. If we click, it's giving maximum stay winds of 65 miles per hour, so has weakened a little bit. That's why it's gone down from a hurricane to a tropical storm. If we click on Elsa and go there, we can see that tropical storm Elsa is going to move northwards through Cuba, uh, the Caribbean islands as well, but will move northwards and hit Cuba uh, through the early part of this coming week and then move to Florida by the middle of the week, then move up the east coast of America uh, by the end of next week. No doubt bring copious amounts of rain with it as well. Right, so I thought I'd have a quick look about it. Jump my memory to when I was talking about the oceans. Jump my memory, but better have a look. Right, let's see what SOI is doing then. So the Southern Oscillation Index is just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state in the Southern Ocean. It isn't driving anything in its own terms. It just tells us what the atmosphere is doing when the SOI is in its positive uh, phase. Uh, then the uh, atmospheric setup will be reflective of La Nina. When the SOI is in its negative phase, the atmospheric setup will be reflective of El Nino. So if we come down, we can see that uh, most recent days have been seeing quite positive numbers actually uh, coming back. So yeah, so it seem to be moving into a bit more of a landing your type uh, situation. So 25th of June, for example, comes out plus 10.54. 26th of June comes out plus 5.83. 27th of June goes a little bit negative to minus 5.62. 28th of June goes a little bit negative again to minus 6.19. And then we start going really positive from the 30th of June. So uh, 30th of June plus 10.75. 1st of July plus 31.45. Wow, very positive. Uh, 2nd of July plus 25.73. 3rd of July plus 19.27. And 4th of July plus 15. Point zero two strongly positive numbers, so that tells the atmospheric state in the Southern Ocean at the moment is in, is in a pretty strong La Nina uh, type setup, you know. So uh, maybe this is the beginning of moving back to La Nina. That's certainly the direction CFS V two is going. In the last week or two, has seen CFS V two uh, forecasting, uh, but we return to La Nina through this summer and into the uh, into the autumn. Only important number is uh, minus zero point five, just here half degree. Uh, below average, so uh, that's the minimum uh, temperature anomaly requirement to, to be in a Lanier type phase. And you can see from the black dash line that is just falling away as we go on into uh, into the auto by October. We are reaching on the forecast, but it's only forecast, so it could be overdoing it. Sometimes CFS does does overdo uh, do overdo the strength, but by October, the CFS is forecasting that we are. You know, approaching moderate uh, landing your type uh, levels once again, and then we stay around weak to moderate landing your uh, through to the uh, end of the year before it begins to lift up, of course, as we go into the start of next year. So, uh, CFS definitely wants to bring back uh, La Nina at the moment, and uh, with these positive numbers appearing, uh, the atmospheric setup looks like it's moving back towards La Nina type states. So, we may start to see these sea surface temperature anomalies getting colder, especially if this area begins to uh, get colder in the coming weeks. Right, Eurasian snow cover. We'll uh, only look at this very briefly because there's hardly any Eurasian snow cover to see, uh, you know, except in mountainous areas, uh, Eurasia and Siberia is now pretty much snow free. Arctic sea ice extinct is looking like that. So uh, the blue line is this year, 2021, and, uh, and the grey lines are like our long term averages uh, so let's see how we so obviously we're below average with arctic size extent as we are most years uh these days uh, if you have a look at last year we're really on a par uh, with the uh, melt season from last year at this point remember the melt season won't come to its lowest point until september when we'll be down there somewhere uh putting 2019 and again very much on a par with that uh, let's get rid of those two putting 2018 uh we're a little bit under 2018 that's 2017 which we're on a par with as well uh that's 2016 on a par with that year too that's 2015 so we're a little bit under 2015 but not by much 2014 on a par with that in terms of Arctic Ice Extent as well. Um, 2013, much on a par with that, maybe a little bit under. And then this is the biggest melt season that uh, we've had in sort of recent years, which is 2012. And we're bang on 2012, which is that red dash line. So so we're under average, but we are close to our uh, recent years, you know, over the past uh, few years. 
Uh, right, Arctic's, uh, Arctic Oscillation uh, next. That kind of ties in with Arctic Size Extent as well. Uh, so the AO Observer Forecast, he's talking about this. Black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation, red line to the end. We have a GFS Ensemble, so forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. At the moment, the AO is around neutral. It's neither positive nor negative, but the uh, GFS Ensembles are forecasting that the Arctic Oscillation will go positive through the first half of July. So we begin to be into a positive phase of the AO through uh, the first half of uh, July, which tells us low pressure will be strengthening within Arctic regions. Remember, all these indexes are just reflecting the atmospheric state. So uh, if you've got a positive AO, then you'll have low pressure over the Arctic. But if you've got a negative AO, you'll have high pressure blocking over the Arctic. The NAO, observed forecast, is around neutral uh, as well. The black, line, the black line, I should say, is uh, very, very close to neutral with the NAO2. GFS ensembles are forecasting that the NEO will go into more of a positive phase through the first half of July. So both the AO and the NEO are going to be positive. This could be a signal for the Azores high to start strengthening and ridging in, possibly bringing us more warm or maybe even hot weather. Right, let's do some forecast, then. So we saw how the GFS upper temperature and precipitation ensembles are looking for the next couple of weeks. So the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Swansea. I looked at that yesterday. I thought we'd look at it again today. Uh, so we're under average, slightly under average, anyway, with the GFS ensembles over the next uh, few days. As we run out into the second week of July up to the middle of the month, though, we'll see uh, the um, uh, upper air temperature going a bit warmer than average, lifting back up again. So there is definitely like a warming trend taking place here from uh, being a bit cooler than average uh, in the next few days to gain rather warmer than average actually uh, as we go into the middle part of July. So it looks like those upper air temperatures will be uh, starting to uh, lift up uh, in around, probably in around five to seven days time I think um, and there are some quite hot ensemble members in there as well uh, by the way so these ones up here are going to around plus 15 at 850 HPA so that's going to really quite a hot level Precipitation-wise, uh, there's going to be plenty of rainfall coming up over the next day. It's going to be very, very wet uh, tomorrow night and into Tuesday morning for large parts of England. Wales. more rain to come later on in the week. Maybe a bit of a drying trend, though, after that as we move into the middle and then the second half of the month. There could be a bit of a drying and warming trend taking place. So it would tie in with the Azores High Strengthening. Temperature anomalies from the 4th to the 12th of July going to be uh, rather, uh, slightly below average for England and Wales actually, rather warmer than average for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Precipitation anomalies from the 4th to the 12th like, of July just looking generally wetter than average really. Latest wind flow map from EarthNoldSchool.net shows that low pressure is driving the weather at the moment in the Atlantic and we are bringing in these south uh, to southwest winds. They're warm and humid winds uh, pushing in from off the Atlantic. Right, let's have a look at some model data then. So this is how the UK Met is looking for Wednesday from the weather outlook. This is midnight Wednesday. Trough of low pressure is through the coach. will bring showers or longer spells of rain with it through Thursday and into Friday. We'll find the Azores high starting to strengthen and ridge in from off the Atlantic. So it becomes uh, drier and warmer as we come into the second half of the week. And temperatures, you know, could become uh, quite warm down in the south, maybe back up into the mid 20 Celsius uh, from that. And then into next weekend, as far as we get to with you, it's to midnight on Sunday, uh, by which time we're looking rather slack and potentially quite warm, maybe pretty hot, bringing the wind in from like an easterly direction with this ridge of high pressure across northern Europe. So you expect quite a lot of dry, potentially warm, maybe even quite hot weather uh, with that. Could be some uh, could be some thunderstorms though from the weakness in pressure down across the south, just triggered by the warmth and humidity. But that does look like quite a warm chart, doesn't it, with that high pressure dominating across much of northern Europe. This is how the uh, midnight GFS is looking. Can't show six said course because it hasn't updated as i'm doing video at 20 minutes past 10 on sunday morning but this has been midnight gfs looks uh or looked um so low pressures over top of the country on wednesday that will give us an unsettled middle part of the week through thursday and friday we get this ridge building from the azores high to northern europe it will begin to turn drier and a little bit warmer as well. And then into the weekend, this next low sort of comes in from off the Atlantic. It starts to squash the ridge down 
a bit so it begins to turn a little bit more showery and slightly cooler across northern and northwestern parts of the country. Into the early part of next week, looks a little bit unsettled through uh, through the early part of next week. This is Tuesday, 13th of July. Another little low is coming in off the Atlantic. That's been showers. You've got some long spells right to northern parts of Europe. Still probably mainly dry though and quite warm in the south. And then day 10, which is the 14th of July, takes us back into a cooler and showery northwesterly flow. And many the more extended range, the midnight GFS run uh, restarts to uh, in, in freight high uh, across the country for reach of the Azores, eventually forms down with high pressure to our east. We start to pull in what could be a very warm, maybe even pretty hot sort of south east wind. Let's have a look at the upper uh, temperature. He's got the plus 15 cells ice firm there just into the south east. That could see the temperature lifting up to quite a hot level actually. Might go above 30 degrees for that. There is a fungi low though that is across uh, France as well. So it does look uh, a little bit on the volatile side. Um, that might deliver some thunderstorms uh, of course. And then right at the very end of a GFS midnight run uh, we look like that. Still a bit of an extension from the Azores high. So it looks like the middle part of July on this GFS run anyway is going really quite warm it may be hot with a strengthening of the uh, Azores high but before then we have quite a bit of mixed uh, weather to get out of the way not terrible but you know for, for the second week of July um, that's the middle of the month we do have quite a bit of mixed weather uh, GM looks like that. So again, on Wednesday, uh, we've got this trough through the country. That brings showers long as well as rain. Quite cool temperature as well. Into the second half of the week, the ridge of high pressure from resource will strengthen. And it will start to warm up. And then as we go into the weekend, uh, or next weekend, I suppose I should say, again, this ridge building across the UK into northern Europe. We are bringing in a bit of an east north east wind, so it's not guaranteed to be a uh, water wall sunshine with that. But it should certainly be drier and uh, warmer than what... Uh, you know, what we have through the early part of this coming week anyway. But up to day 10, we just keep a lot of high pressure influences from the Azores really into uh, the UK and into Western Europe. So pretty warm, uh, maybe quite hot and dry uh, there as we get to day 10. Uh, and then uh, the ECM looks like that. So uh, again, this trough through the country on Wednesday will be showers long as well as rain. And then into the second half of the week and next weekend, high pressure sort of takes over. Although we do have this thundery low down across France, it could threaten some thunderstorms into the south. But, but overall, a lot of dry and quite warm weather there through uh, the weekend. Um, into the following week, uh, we, which is uh, going to be Monday the 12th of July at the start, of course. Low pressure to east, high pressure to the west. Um, we bring the wind in for a little bit of a north northeasterly type direction. And then the high pressure sort of ridges back in by day 10. So always looking relatively dry and quite warm in the south around Thursday onwards. Always a little bit more mixed and changeable in the north. Because that's as far as we get to with the uh, ECM. And, and it's beyond that, but we're looking to see whether that Azores high really starts to build and uh, turns us hotter for the third week, I suppose, of the month. Right, this is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. Showery across the country, really, over the next uh, few hours. Heavy showers and some long spells of rain as well. And then bring quite a significant area of low pressure up from the south as we go from Monday into Tuesday. That'll bring heavy rain to much of England and Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Not as wet with that. Into the middle part of next week, again, further showers coming and going. And many will gradually start to settle down into next weekend. But never completely dry. And in the south, actually, there is still some shy rain, even into uh, next weekend. Actually, northern areas are a little bit drier. And then up to day 10, it looks like things are turning generally dry uh, or drier across many parts of the country. Uh, we'll have a look at the uh, option of a table within the ECM ensembles in our live stream uh, tonight because they won't update for another hour or two. And we'll also bring the, the uh, latest CFS V2 weeklies in our live stream as well. So the last thing we'll look at for the Sunny Roundup is going to be the uh, CFS V2 700 millibar forecast for August and uh, going for an area of above average heights, high pressure be sitting just to our west and lower pressure is to the north and winds are coming in quite like a westerly direction. So still an anticyclonic signal for August, but a slight reposition repositioning up high pressure, taking it a little bit to our west, would suggest that we might start turning uh, somewhat uh, cooler with the wind kind of coming in from off the Atlantic. But still a lot of dry and fine weather. The temperature anomaly is uh, forecast to be close to average, no particular signal with that. And the precipitation anomaly uh, finally is forecast to be perhaps a little bit on the drier 
an average side, which you would expect with high pressure to our west. So a little bit cooler, but still high pressure and mainly dry uh, conditions for August. That would round off what I think most people would uh, think is a pretty good, or has been, or was a pretty good summer. If you like warm, dry weather. Right, if you enjoyed this sunny roundup, please can you smash your like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Because always tell friends and family and everybody else to su subscribe. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. We just hit 11.4k subscribers. We're on the cusp of it anyway. Uh, give or take one or two. So uh, so thank you so much for getting us to 11.4k. Our next target, of course, mini target, will be 11.5k. And our overall target will be 12 thousand subscribers so thank you so much everybody for all of the support drop a comment let us know what you think about this and all of our videos thank you so much for doing this uh for gab's weather bits right that's it for sunny round man i hope you found it interesting and informative uh we are bringing down the crock a little bit on these sunny rounds maybe we'll be stopping these when we get to the beginning of september because we'll be doing winter updates and most of the things that we look at in the sunny round will be included in the winter update. So, uh, so Sunday rounds always get put on the back burner at the beginning of September. So we've got another couple of months to go, but I suppose we are starting to run down the clock slightly on uh, the Sunday roundups uh, for this year. But as I say, still a couple of months of um, uh, left. If you enjoy it, then, I, uh, you know, uh, we'll be doing it all over again next Sunday. I'm going to be back at 6 live streaming. It's so live streaming, so I've got to show you some long range. We'll do some short range and some long range. So that'll be coming up at 6. And after that, I'm having a few days off. Uh, and I am uh, ready for it, I can tell you that. So uh, I'll see you live at 6. And uh, I'll be a bit DMOP happy, I suppose. Uh, but uh, I'll see you at 6 anyway. Um, you enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and uh, I'll see you later. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.